Howdy there, folks. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs, and I'm here with Curtis Hickman, CCO and co-founder of The Void. Now, you guys probably noticed a couple months ago on YouTube, there was a video that got pretty popular, a few million views, mm -hmm. about this service. Basically, what it is, and I'll let him explain, but it is uh, virtual reality on top of real-world environments. So rather than having to spin around in the same spot trying to simulate real life, you have virtual reality goggles on. You have objects with which you can interact in a real world, real size environment. So tell us more about it. Uh, so what happens is you go in and you put on a specialty pair of uh, goggles, right, okay. HMD. Yeah. Uh, and that allows you to see the virtual world. But then what we've done is perfectly matched uh, that virtual world on top of the physical world. Uh, so when you walk in, you see a wall, you can reach out, touch that wall, and it's, it's there. That's cool. Yeah. It not only grounds you in the experience, but it also helps a lot with the gameplay. Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm running around in a first-person shooter sort of thing, I can't cheat and just hop through a wall. There's a wall there. Uh, and there's, like you said, there's objects uh, that you can interact with inside of the void. We have a lot of different effects that we use as well to make it seem more real. So if you're on a, a cliff somewhere, you're going to feel the wind. If you're near a fire, you'll feel the heat. Uh, we do uh, a lot to try and make the experience as realistic as possible. Uh, really, it's, it's true VR. Obviously, one of the constraints with uh, office size locations, and I mean, this is a warehouse, but space is limited, right? So, yeah. how do you create multiple experiences and multiple levels on top of the same environment? Uh, so, that's sort of the secret uh, magic, if you will, that we, we kind of use in order to make the, uh, the experience happen. Uh, we do a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, redirective walking, so we're able to kind of control where you move and how you move, and then reuse the space over and over but change how that space looks. So that the user, the player, wouldn't really even recognize that they had already been there, right? Exactly, and on top of all that, we use a very proprietary sort of system we've developed uh, to make these worlds endless. So you can make all the decisions you want. You can go left, you go right, go wherever you want, explore a whole city, um, but not leave this, this very limited area that you're, you're in. So right now we're in a closed beta. Uh, what's your estimated time of opening? What locations do you have plans to expand? Uh, so we're first going to open uh, just here over in Pleasant Grove. Uh, that's our, our first void uh, location, our flagship, if you will. And uh, from there, we plan to expand all over the world. Uh, we hope that void becomes uh, just like your local movie theater. Uh, everywhere you go, there's a void. That's awesome. When do you plan to open? Uh, so summer. Summer. Summer next year. Summer 2016. That's it. All right, cool. Any other things that we should know before we hop in there and check it out? Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's unlike anything you, you've ever experienced. And, uh, I'm excited. Sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and to be fair, we're running a, a, a limited uh, kind of beta. Okay. So, you know, if, if uh, you look for that because they, the spots go quickly. But uh, if you guys want to, anyone else wants to check it out, uh, look for that. And, and uh, where would people who are interested find that to sign up? Uh, so look for like Facebook on our social okay. is where we first usually announce that. And then they sign up uh, at uh, thevoid.com. Cool. And we'll leave those links in the video description below. But I'm already antsy. I'm gonna, let's go check it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we went through the void last night, and look, I'm sorry we can't show you any video footage. Uh, one of the reasons why is it's still very much in beta. The hardware's not finalized, so they didn't want us bringing our cameras in there. But that was by far, by far the best VR experience I've ever had in my life, and it may be one of the coolest things I've ever done. Look, I was like a lot of people that thought it would be very vaporware-esque, not very smooth, not very fluid, but that was absolutely freaking incredible. And let me tell you why. You walk in, they put on this helmet that has the VR goggles and uh, this little backpack that contains all the components that transmits the information up to the computers. Again, can't explain much in detail, and they honestly didn't really tell me how it works. but. You put the goggles on and you're in this immersive environment. And the reason it's so cool is it's not your traditional VR where you just spin your head, you actually get to move and the tracking was amazingly good. I would take steps forward and I move forward in the game. Steps backward, I move backward. And it was even almost like the vision had kind of this, I mean, it moved to the way I walked. It was really, really polished and really cool. The level that I did that I found most impressive, we played two levels. The level that I found most impressive was called the Temple Experience. And why it was cool was I went in and the lady over above, the god lady, I don't know who's in charge of the temple, she told me to sit down. I saw a bench, I walked over, 
and I could sit down. It was a real physical bench that I was able to sit on and it was really kind of tripping my mind out because I didn't think like, okay, I should sit down because I'm in a video game. I thought if I sit down, there's gonna be nothing here and I'm gonna fall and <laughs> flat on my butt. But sure enough, I sat down, there was a bench. I kind of had to feel it to make sure that it was there, but it was there. And once I had about one or two minutes with the game, I really started to trust being able to walk full speed ahead without having to worry about running into anything. And you didn't. One of the amazing things was uh, I had to reach to grab out for a torch because I was walking through this abandoned temple that was really dark. And the 40 effects are amazing. It was drafty, it felt cool, it was damp. They use a bunch of different technologies to stimulate all of your senses, not just what you hear and not just what you see, but also how you walk how you feel, vibrations in the floor, there are wind drafts, there are whirlwinds. I mean, it's just very, very, very immersive. Anyway, I saw this torch on the wall and the lady said, grab the torch. So I went out, I reached it and sure enough, there was a torch. I could hold it in my hand, wave it in front of me and it moved exactly to the movements I made it. It was absolutely remarkable. I walked forward, walked through a bunch of little mazes, and I was able to feel the walls as I walked by them. It was cold, it was damp, it was, it was misty, kind of like this abandoned temple would be. Uh, it was very, very surreal. And then the coolest part was I had to get to this point where there was a river running underneath me, or I think it was a river, I'm trying to remember. But I walked onto this platform that was an elevator. And there was a stone in front of me that had a picture of a handprint. So I put my hand on top of this stone. It was a stone that I actually felt. And at that moment, this wooden platform that was an elevator that I could look down at and look around and see the birds flying in this huge gully and I could see a little bit of sunlight. I started to move up the platform. I'm sure it was just a simulation of a, a vibrating motor in the floor or they were able to shake the floor in a way, but I actually felt like I was moving up this crickety old elevator. There was wind that was coming up from below me. There was mist that was splashing from the river. There was the vision and the visuals and I could hear the birds in my ear. I mean, it was literally the coolest thing I have ever done. And this is the future of VR. It is not vaporware. It is not fake. This was a real experience that was so immersive, so surreal that I actually like worried for my own safety when I was in the game. Like I had uh, walk across this edge so that I didn't fall into the pit below. And even though that there was solid floor below me, I would not have fallen into a pit. I had kind of tricked my brain into thinking that I would have. That if I had walked across this crickety old platform that, I don't know, I'd fall into the oblivion and never leave the void. I mean, it was a very, very cool experience. I wish we could explain it in more detail. I wish you could experience it because it's one of those things that I know I think it's really cool and I'm explaining it to you right now and you guys are like, okay, well, that sounds cool or I don't know. Let me tell you, it is the most immersive VR experience I've ever had in my real life. It is the closest simulation to real life that I have ever had. And it is the future of video games. Screw laser tag, screw everything else. This is amazing. It will be the future of, of really VR as a whole. And I hope voids pop up all over the place and in your city so you can check them out. Uh, they'll be available in summer of 2016, at least here in Utah, and then hopefully they'll expand to other locations in the future. But it was an amazing experience. If you ever get the opportunity opportunity to beta test at the void, take it. I don't care if you have to travel halfway across the country, those 10-15 minutes are worth it. It is amazing. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. Thank you so much for watching. I have a breath. I've been talking so long. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.